Well, I guess when you bring somebody who is no stranger to milestones and what a career that she's had, what an international career uh, for this Alberton-born lady who made her international debut as a teenager. I think that was as early as uh, 2005. <laughs> Across the century of senior caps in 2014. In the decades that has elapsed between those two dates, she's had, I mean, she's grown from an emerging talent to somebody of international acclaim. As far as women's national team is concerned, to an accomplished leader, one of those uh, trailblazing achievements stretching beyond the pitch. Sadly, though, she gets to miss out on her second World Cup appearance, something that has raised a bit of eyebrows. Is she injured? Was she just dropped? Has she retired? From Banyana Banyana. What really happened there? Janine van Veek is here to tell us exactly what happened. Um, she'll be with us uh, for the 30 minutes slot. Janine, good to see you. I still call you captain. You'll be captain forever in my eyes. Thanks, Robert. Good to be on your show. <laughs> I was just saying that no better person to have in studio. You know, mm-hmm. uh, chatting to Minister, he's at the airport on his way. Uh, you're not on your way I wish I to was. this World Cup. <laughs> hey, I mean, I you're going to training after this show. Yep. I was expecting, at least with all the experience that you have, uh, to be given a bit of a call up or a call up is what I call it what happened yeah I mean um, I was left out of the preparation uh, friendlies I think just after the after we won the African Cup of yeah. Nations um, we had some uh, friendlies against Brazil uh, that I managed to play and then just after that I made my way to Greece to play in Greece I mm-hmm. uh, got off over there and then Coach Desiree called me up and said that she would like to have a look at newcom- newcoming players um, because she obviously knows what I'm capable of and what I can deliver towards the team. Um, and she, I didn't realize that I would be left out for all the preparation matches. It was quite a surprise to me. Yeah. Um, but I just carried on in, in Greece and um, just before the provisional squad um, she called me up and asked if I could join the provisional squad. Um, but unfortunately, um, it was just before then I picked up a slight knee injury, mm-hmm. um, which um, didn't put me out of the game. But also I did, you know, lose a bit of fitness because I wasn't training mm-hmm. as much in Greece. I wasn't playing as much in Greece. Um, and then I had to make a decision during that 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 call and that meeting with Des. Um, to determine whether I would be ready for that competition, that level of competition of going into the provisional squad and competing for my spot against newcomers, against experienced players. Um, I mean, there's so much talent coming through as well. And um, I had to be honest with myself and my country and the leader, and um, I turned the call down because I knew that I wasn't capable of competing at that level. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to disappoint myself knowing that I would be out of the squad because of those very reasons. And also to give another player an opportunity to showcase herself um, as one of the potential players to be called up for the squad. I didn't want to take that away from any player um, because I knew I wasn't ready. And I knew that come World Cup, I'm not going to be at my best game. If I'm called upon, I'm not going to be at my best. So I'm still kind of struggling here and there with that injury. Um, Just coming back from it and being able to train and hopefully you know, coming back, I'm going to be playing in the Hollywood Bet Super League mm. for JVW. And when the season starts, I will be ready to fire again. But I have to be honest with myself, I'm not able to deliver what I could deliver, um, you know, if I were fit. Um, yeah. And yeah, that was a disappointing moment for me, but I think the correct one to make. Sure. I mean, very brave and very honest of you uh, to have done that. Yep. What did it take? Let's say your conversation with Des is, you know what, I appreciate the call-up, but as somebody with the experience that I have, I cannot do this. Was it an emotional one from your side and from Des? How did she take that news? Yeah, it was very emotional for me, Um, definitely. It was an easy easy decision for me to make at all. Um, You know, for me in the back of my head, I was like, I can still make it. I still have a couple of months to get myself ready. Um, but it was always in the back of my mind that I'm not really fit enough to compete in that provisional squad either. So it would be unfair to take that opportunity mm. away from someone. For me, Robert, it's about it's not about the individual. It's about the team. It's about the country. Who is the best player to go and represent the country? And I would have loved to go as as the leader of the team that have 
been in the squad for many years um, to go. And, you know, I would have loved for Des to say, you know what, Janine, even though you're injured, mm. we would like for you to come with. I see that being done to Marta. I see that yeah. being done to Sega of, of Sweden. So I would have loved the association to say, hey, Janine, we're flying you to, mm. to with the squad just to be that, that change room um, presence, presence, yeah. and um, motivation as well. I was a bit disappointed that they they couldn't do that, but it's unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, so I'm here, still supporting the team and speaking to the players from behind the scenes. When you talk about that disappointment, I I kind of feel it because I've also seen it on, on many different platforms, different players, both yeah. the men's game and the women's game. Um, I mean, you've broken records. I, I, I was scribbling early on just some mental notes I needed to make and also just to share with the listener and you know the viewer as well you making your debut as a teenager in 2005 that is massive you reached your century of caps in 2014 so you do the calculation you got to your 125th international appearance in 2016 which on its own was already historic uh, because nobody else had reached that before getting to your 150th cap in 2018 then 180th cap is what was then calculated in January this year. The most by any African player is where you sit right now. I mean, I need to take a deep breath just to <laughs> absorb all of that. And a presence like yours, especially in a team that has been plagued with so much that's been going on off the field, yeah. is that your, your, your calming effect, your leadership, would have been something that the players would have appreciated, in my view. How would a conversation have been, or who would that person be that would have made that decision? I would envisage either between the coach as well as the president of the Football Association, if they value a person like you, to say, guys, let us do this for the sake of the team. They leave this airport with their minds all over the place. I don't know if I'm making any sense yeah, with that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot to take in for the players. Um, I was very afraid that this would be a massive distraction for the players going into such a massive tournament. I mean, the pressure is on the shoulders of being African champions. Yeah. So it's our second World Cup. Um, a lot of expectations are now a lot higher compared to our first World Cup. I mean, 2019 was our first World Cup. People were just celebrating for the fact that we were there. Mm. Now we have qualified for the World Cups back to back. And being African crown champions, we need to get out of the group stages. And now all of this has happened off the field. It could be a big distraction for the for the players and the team. But looking at them, um, playing against Costa Rica, getting a great result, very convincing 2-0 against um, them. It just also means that the experience within the squad is so high that and so good that they're able to put that behind them for that moment mm. and focus on the task ahead. And I'm really hoping that they can do this going into their opening match against Sweden. I mean, I, I always see there's almost a threat of some sort. You see it in the men's game. People always say and advocate for an involvement of guys like Lucas Khatebe uh, to be there. Uh, there's always an advocate for people like Doctor, other individuals in the game to be involved. Yes, Desiree is there. She's a, she's a former captain and a former player for Banyana Banyana. Um, so I understand that she's been given a, an opportunity. But do you always find, maybe it's early on, I don't even know if you've retired, I'll ask you this in a second. <laughs> but do you find, though, that people are allergic to the input that individuals with your experience, your traveling experience, your international experience, your club experience do have, as opposed to embracing you, there's almost like a barrier that's been put there? Yeah, um... Yeah, of course, I would have loved to go and use my experience, um, even if it was off the field. I mean, AFCON, I hardly played matches. I played one match, but I was rallying the, the team on in the finals at halftime. You know, Coach Des, I could see that she had a lot of pressure on her shoulders. She came in literally for two minutes in the halftime of the Moroccan game and, you know, just said, we need to be better, we need to score goals. And that was it. And the players looked anxiously like, what's next? And for me, I went to every single player and just gave them a small task to do focus, play for each other, do the basic right. And and those those are the things that are contributed to the team, um, just bringing that, that calmness to the players and just... Um, reinforcing how valuable they are and how good they are um, and that was that was kind of my task during AFCON and I thought maybe at the World Cup that 
kind of experience could have been used whether I was playing or not playing. Um, but yeah, it's obviously coach's decisions on who she wants to take um, and um, she'd rather take a player that could play and could get her debut, World Cup debut and, and you know, leave a player like myself behind but um you know it, it still hasn't stopped me from playing i mean from from speaking to each and every single individual hearing how they are how they're coping how's training me going are they ready um and by people that i have or the players that i have been speaking to they mm. are in a, in a good space and um regardless of the distraction on the outside they're in a good space and they're ready for the match well, i was going to ask you that i've followed a couple of them on social media they're dancing around yep. in, the, in the rooms and they're having a bit of fun and so on, which made me happy because it was good to see that mm -hmm. uh, based on what we read and what we've seen before they, their departure. So is that what they're reporting to you? Is that, hey, we have the World Cup, so we can't change that, whether we're getting two cents or whether yeah. we're getting 200,000 rand. Yeah, and they know that the pressure is on them. I mean, they made a big noise this side. They, they, they got the, the country behind them in, in certain things that they, they wanted to get. And, but they know they, they, have, they have a duty ahead of them, mm. and their duty is to make our country proud. They can't be screaming one thing and then not deliver the other thing. So they know that they have um, a, a big duty at, at hand. Um, the opening match is crucial for us. I mean, we know Sweden is ranked third in the world. Yeah. We know that they're one of the best teams at the World Cup, but it still doesn't mean we don't have opportunity to grab something from them. Um, but yeah, get out of this group stage. I think it's, it, it is reality for us. We can do it, we can. Navigate the best way possible, given the group that we have. Um, I think we could possibly get out the, the, the group stage, um, even if our opening match doesn't go as we want, even mm -hmm. if we, we come out with a loss against Sweden. I think we can really steal a lot of points from Argentina. Definitely, we are um, compatible to them. I think we on par with the way their style of play is compared to ours. But I do think with the experience that we have, players playing abroad, um, the group of players that we have, I really do think that we can get points from Argentina. And the Italians are, I mean, depending on how the group goes, the last game is always the most crucial one um, as well. And I think with the Italians, they always um, will come out aggressively. Um, but we have our captain, Fifi Gianni, that plays in it in the Italian league and I'm pretty sure she knows those players inside out and will give our players some feedback on that um, as well as the coach but I do believe that we could come out with a win against Italy as well even if it is a draw and come out with four points that is possible um, but yeah we'll see how things go but it's a tough one as as all World Cups should be oh, yeah. but there's also room for upsets and like you rightfully said Previously, we would come in as no hopers, mm -hmm. but to walk in there as African champions brings about some clout uh, to it. So my question before we take a break is that as far as international football is concerned, you have not retired from that. I have not retired. I don't know who makes up these stories that I've retired, but I've yeah. not retired. I still have a record to break and that I will do before I hang my boots. And that is I'm um, two caps or appearances away from becoming the highest African player on the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm the highest cap female player on the continent, but I would like to be the highest cap player. Um, it's a record that hasn't been broken for many years and I would like to do that, not because it's for myself, but it's for my country, mm -hmm. it's for my association and for all those long serving um, times of being in the national team, all the sacrifices I had made, I think that's one last thing that I would like to achieve before I retire from international football. What number of caps do we sit on now? I currently have 183. So it's 183? Yeah. Two more to go. You're not equaling a record, you're breaking. Equaling would be one to go. One so to two go. two to go and I'll be breaking that record. Sure. And why not? I, I mean, I really rattled a whole lot where that was already record breaking. Uh, but to get to a stage where as a football player, whether male or female, you're seen as the best. Would you retire straight after that game? I definitely would because I think um, everything else I've wanted to achieve in my football career, I have done. Um, I've played at the World Cup, Olympics, been crowned African champion, and the, now this is just one last, last straw for me to just achieve, and that would be my career fulfilled.
I think it's very achievable. We come back from the break. We have our final moments with Janine van Veek. As she says, she's not retired. She's got to rush off to training. <laughs> and that's what she does for a living. So uh, we'll make way for that. Still lots to come on the show. Don't go anywhere. Hi, good evening, Robert. Um, I would like to echo your sentiment um, that um, Janine, wherever she goes in this country, will always see her as a captain. A captain, a leader, a soldier of note. And then, uh, sadly, like she is saying, that um, it would have been an ideal to have her in that dress room, just the presence. And we've seen, as she has already alluded to, that many countries, big, they, are, they bring their big, big personalities into their dressing room. But, um, yeah, well, we talk about uh, SAFA leadership. The less um, I can say more about it. Thank you very much, but uh, Captain, thank you very much for the service to this nation, and then great work what that you are doing at uh, at your club, and then wish you all the best. Thank you, Tembele and Rob. Good evening, Rob. It's the boy here, Rob. You're talking to a great servant of the game, a great leader, stalwart. Uh, Janine van Veek has served uh, uh, this country with distinction. Uh, just want to find out from Janine, looking at uh, Megan Rapinoe's uh, exit strategy that uh, the U.S. Uh, Federation has put together uh, to to ensure that she gets involved in football uh, beyond her career. Have there been any conversations uh, similar to you uh, to ensure that you get you don't get lost uh, in the uh, in the women's football and not only you you've been involved with uh, Janine van Veek JVW, but also with the knowledge that you have acquired and your experience to impart that knowledge with other uh, players, upcoming players. Just want to find out from you if there have been any conversations around that. It's the Bokoye, wishing you all the best. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marawa, and uh, good evening to your guest, Janin. Uh, Mr. Marawa, just a quick one for Janin. Uh, does she see herself back uh, in the national team since uh, miss a big tournament like uh, a World Cup, or she will focus at uh, club level? Thank you, Mr. Marawa. Good show. Spongaleni, thank you so much indeed. You know, when you're talking about excellence, that's what Janine van Veek is all about. And I think a lot of people echoing exactly that. Um, Tom Benny on Twitter says, Janine has given so much for the women's game. Her presence in the Banyana squad left a remarkable uh, mark. And for her to not accept a call-up for the prelim squad uh, demonstrates the type of leader that she is. I uh, would have loved to see her at the FIFA World Cup behind the scenes. So a lot of those uh, coming through. You heard those voice notes. Um, Tembele, maybe a quick reaction to that first one and you know, pretty much saying what we were talking about here, uh, including what Teboho was talking about, using Megan <laughs> as an example, saying that the US have got a, an exit strategy for her. Is there one for you? Um, well, I would hope so. I don't know, but I have acquired my um, UA for B license not so long ago. Um, I was in Scotland and I, was, I thought about doing my, my badges over there. Yeah. I have my UEFA B, I have my CAF B, um, and obviously still working on uh, getting UEFA A and CAF A. So definitely a career that I want to get into is coaching. Um, football is my passion, it's my life, and um, definitely want to um, share my knowledge and experience down to the next generation. I mean, would we lose you? I mean, would you, if a Vera Powell says, you know what, I loved working with Janine. Let her come through and be my assistant, for example. Well, yeah, Vera, as we, Vera and I speak a lot. We speak often. Um, and, yeah, she was one to say she has to go to in any other team, a club team. She would definitely call me up as an assistant. So that's something I really look forward to. And um, hopefully it does happen because she's a fantastic mentor and coach. Um, and I got an offer at um, in England in the... Uh, in the league over there to be an assistant to a coach of mine that I coached with, um, I mean, played with under Glasgow. Um, and yeah, that's something that I turned away because I don't feel I'm ready yet. I still con want to continue to play. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely a career that I would follow after playing football. Yeah, let's not lose you. That's all I'm saying for now. Hi, Rob. This is Enu from Rodipot. Rob, uh, what a legend you have in your studio. Uh, you cannot mention South African women football without mentioning Janine van Veig. She has done a remarkable job to develop young talent. 
um, you know, without any significant sponsorships. Um, you know, if you look at most of the uh, players that are playing in, in Sasol and Holhood Bets, they come from the hands of Janine van Veek, Rob. Even my own daughter who plays for Sundowns today comes from uh, Janine van Veek Academy. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that she does it without any support or any uh, sponsorships, which worries me because if you look at how fast the women's football is evolving and the teams that are coming now to start uh, women's football clubs, I, I'm afraid that they might uh, entice her to sell uh, the status uh, to some of these, uh, you know, famous clubs, and we might lose that uh, factory where she's producing good uh, women football uh, uh, players, Rob. But I just want to say, heads off her. She's an amazing person, remarkable, humble as ever, well achieved. And in my opinion, she still had, had about two to three years to play for the national team. And Rob, you know, she's a defender uh, by, 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 by position. But Rob put Janine van Veig as a as a a, 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 a a CDM, you know, a, a defensive middle fielder. She does a remarkable job. She can hold, she can distribute the ball. The passing rate is it's remarkable. And I just think that it's a lost opportunity that we didn't choose her to the World Cup, uh, Rob. And from Rodiport, thank you, Rob. Sure. Wow, that was amazing. That's, that got me emotional, actually, that noise note. But um, I'm very humbled to hear all the support that I'm getting and people still... Um, giving such amazing comments about my football and um, yeah, I will I will definitely take this into to heart and yeah, amazing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my next question is just that we don't have time would have been how on earth do you manage? How on earth do you manage all of this as Andrew and Rudderport were saying without much support? There's got to be something. Yeah, that is extremely difficult. Um, it's it's hard, Rob. You have no idea how tough it is to be an independent club. Yeah. Um, trying to develop talent. Trying to. We have. I have a schools league, JBW schools league, where I get talent from. I have over 300 schools in Gauteng participating in the in the schools league. This Saturday will be the Diamond Cup. It's all the schools coming together the best schools in Gauteng playing a tournament. We're getting super sports schools involved to try and broadcast that to show people what we are doing, how much talent there is yeah. in the schools league um, and getting them into the club. But it's so difficult to sustain. It's You see players go to different clubs, Sundowns, to TS Galaxy, coming to grab our players because they have so much more money to yeah, offer. Yeah, yeah. If I can get a proper sponsor to come on board to, be ha to help to sustain my football club, to be able to pay my players... And, enough the players are happy the what, players what do you love. need for example per season give me oh. give me a ballpark there's somebody that's listening to the show right now who knows jenny and van Veek. a season just for the hollywood bet super yeah. league is about four million rand so four a million season. you would need to just be functional and be able to retain the players that is not even the development to us facilitate yeah. to facilitate um our players it's 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 costly it's to transport our players it's to pay a player's salary to buy tracksuits and kit for for our young development it costs a whole lot of money and to to grab money i have a great team behind me that you know you know, use their own money to to be able to pay, to have players wear proper tracksuits yeah. to games and so on. Um, that's why we came up with the Hollywood Bet Super League, where we came out with the, our first team to wear their own fashion wear. And people thought it was a great trend JVW is coming with. It's because mm. JVW doesn't have money to afford tracksuits for for these girls to wear and look the same. So it's very difficult out there. But yet we're still fourth on the log. In Hollywood Bet Super League, the players are happy. They committed to the training. They love JVW. It's just if a TS Galaxy or Sundowns come on board mm. to offer these players more money, of course they're going they to can. go. So that's the difficult situation that <laughs> we're struggling with. I mean, that's our captain of our very what our maiden World Cup that people know that they respect, and we know we've got the talent. That's why we are at the World Cup. That's why she was at the maiden World Cup as well. But we just don't plug the money where it matters most. Um, well, it is um, a big difference having players playing abroad. That is what they do professionally day in, day out. They have two sessions a day where they train. They do, be, they do come to camp a lot fitter. 
But I wouldn't say that the, um, that we are far off, the local players are far off from the international players in terms of, of ability and talent and what they're able to give. Um, of course, the coach is looking for something other than just quality and what the player produces. It's also the personality, how she fits into the structure of the team, how she fits into the tactics. Um, so it's not just about the player being compared to international players, what she can bring on and off the field, what she can bring tactically in the kind of formations and structure that the coach is looking for, where she fits, is she versatile, is she able to play two positions. So if, um, you know, those are the comparisons that, that the coach makes. So I wouldn't say that the local players are far off from the internationals. It's just obviously what the coach feels is right um, and if that player is a fit for her kind of style and philosophy. Perfect. Thanks. So I just wanted to get a view on that. Yeah, nice one, John. Great question, man. Thanks for the support. Thank you, guys. Great show. Keep it up. All the best. Banana, banana. Thank you very, very much yeah. indeed. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they need our support. My final question to you, Janine. JVW, Kaiser Chiefs, failed partnership. What happened? Do you have to throw that out there? I had to <laughs> because I was, I was looking forward to this. No, no, no. It was, um, it was a rushed agreement. Um, they just came to us two weeks, three weeks prior to the season kicked off. Um, and it was just a, a rushed thing. I did go and visit their facilities. It was amazing what they, their facilities look like and the plan that they had for their woman and where they want to, the, the visions that they had for their woman, um, that Jessica that is. Um, and all I can say, I mean, a lot of people threw out, you know, numbers out there, but nothing was ever discussed about that. It was mm. just mainly about... Um, the fact that it was it was rushed and we couldn't put it a team together. It was then uh, TS Galaxy coming in to take five, six of JVW players. We didn't have a, a final team and, um, you know, it, it just was rushed for Jessica as well to take on JVW and, um, you know, just the public, just people just make up their own stories about mm. Ginny not wanting to sell because it was, you know, under a certain um, rate. But that wasn't the case it was just anything was it was just rushed at the moment but you wouldn't sell you would work in conjunction with no it would definitely be a, a partnership with yeah. Ch jvw and and chiefs it wouldn't be completely selling it i mean i worked with this development for uh, a decade now it's been 10 almost 11 years that i have built jvw and there's no way i can just throw it it's away. your baby it's your investment course, so yeah. you, you can't throw that away yeah. in as much as chiefs would never want to throw away He's a Chiefs, but they yeah. can work in partnership yeah, with Janine Finlay. No, yeah. it would definitely be partnership, yes. So is, the, is that out completely now? Or are there still chances of reviving it? Maybe um, even if it's not Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah, they, they, they haven't come back to us. But if anyone has to come, any other club has to come on board. I mean, I just mentioned that we yeah. are struggling. So if we can partner with another club that can invest in the woman and we still in control of our woman's side, um, by no, no means I would um, definitely, you know, consider that. Janine. Got to let you go. Thank you so much, man. You've been such a, a sport. I hope the record gets to be broken. Uh, I really think you're one of the deserving South Africans to hold a record like that and proudly so. Uh, never stop trying. I, I know your hustle's major. There's a lot of loopholes. There's a lot of potholes. There's a lot of yeah. landmines yeah. on the route to success. Uh, and I think you might have a couple of keys to unlock that. And if we give you the kind of support that you need and you deserve... We could be a world beater. We could be defending champions on on the continent multiple times. We could hold on to this title year in and year out, every time we compete. But I think if we let slip what we have right now, then we are in big trouble. So yeah. in you and your future, we trust. And I know you said you'll be back uh, to plug away for an hour because there's a lot that we need to really chat about and Definitely. share with the listeners yeah. as well. But Definitely. thank you so much, man. Thank you. Enjoy the training. I will. Thank you for everyone that listened and you, Robert. I really enjoy speaking to you. Thank you so much, man. You are truly the captain, the champ. Robert Marawa, live on 947.